Okay, let's uh, get cracking. This is a mini series on basically daring to say how to win at chess. I know there's lots of people that say, yes, we, this is how you win. We've been through our answer process. So let's break it down in this game right here, right now. So keeping it nice and simple, just going to support the pawn. And the psychology of winning really is like within any sphere that you want to look at, any sport or any type of competitive arena. So what we're doing is we're going to flip it on its head. And we're just going to say basically, well, we're here, we're participating, we're in the game. We have skills to a certain level and we know what we know. What happens after that is in the land, laps of the gods. So we'll do what we know. We'll do the answer process. We've got the confidence to deliver the maneuvers. And if there's an error in the game, then we have to wear that error. We're going to capture the pawn here. So that's as simple as you can put it. The art of winning it's a psychological thing. Once you've achieved a certain level that you're comfortable with and you're happy with and say you've mastered it in your own mind, you don't have to be a physical master, but you've mastered the elements that you want to master within the game or within the sport, within the art, whatever it is that you're competing in, then the only thing that is left to do is to participate in the event and then see how it goes. There's no magic wand to actually winning or gaining advantages. Got like three, what is it, three on there now. We've only got two. Okay, so gonna have to jump out of narration mode now and uh, just focus on the game. Let's participate in the game. So with our narration, we've created a problem for ourselves. The position's not going to be as good but they are going greedy munching. Does it actually improve their position on the board? Let's jump into the game as the participant looking to win this game. All right, let's jump here with the knight. Just looking to see if they're going to be, if they don't take with that one, we can take, but I suppose they can take. So yes, they're going to take it back. That's fine. We don't need to take it. It's only plus one. Let's not get carried away with ourselves. Bishop's looking to take this knight, but we could get the pawn back, you know, because if the bishop takes the knight, knight takes, then we can come here and take this pawn. But we lose the knight. Bad position. Oh, it's got a two on one. It's got the fried liver thing going. Oh, we've got the snowball effect kicking in big style here. We're still participating in the game. We've made an error. Can we get it back? Is there anything we can do? I think they'll go for the fried. Let's just attack the knight. Ah, they've not. Okay, so we can move the king out of the way. If we attack, then he's going to take the pawn. So he's going to take the knight anyway, isn't he? Because he's wanting to double the pawns. But they might not. Okay, so we can get away. Let's mobilize the knight then and attack. Attack where we can. So this idea of winning mentality, yeah, it, it doesn't give you any special skills. It What it does is just make you understand that, yes, you're in the game and you have as much right to gain an advantage in the game as your opponent. But whether you see that or not in the game, that's really down to yourself. What have we got? Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. We've got them running backwards, which is a good thing. It's a good sign. Let's go here. Are we going to get touched up here and touched up here? Knight can come here or he can come here. Okay, dancing with the knight. Don't want to get our pieces trapped in. So I think what I'm going to do is bring this bishop here. Be a stealth. Because they've not gone and owned the file with the rooks. We could go here, but we're going to end up getting trapped. We don't want that. 
So like we said, we can come here or can go there. Maybe go here, swing it around here. And just swing it around. And now they've gone for the ownership. So I'm going to look to trade down, even though we're a minor piece down. They should really take the opportunity to do that. They haven't done. Okay, so they're getting very confident with themselves. And I'm hoping they make a mistake. I'm going to attack the rook. Obviously, the rook is going to take. They're not taking, they're getting a bit arty. I'm really, I'm happy. Let's just bring the bishop back and attack the knight. Because the more times they do, oh, shh, didn't see that. The more times they dance around, not really going for the finish, they're still kind of messing about in mid game. And we're trying to get an end game situation going. So I'm going to hit the bishop. He's blocked off the um, rook, so we can attack the bishop. He's wanting to keep the bishop protecting the knight, so he's going to try and rush to get the knight out at some point. So I think he'll just keep this diagonal wherever he's going. He might even go here, just to be cheeky. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm think I'm half glad that we got in this type of situation because of the um, winning psychology. Oh my God, they have done as well. Just to be cheeky, they're going to me. They're going a little bit far with uh, the dancing, but the blocking off the pot, the rook here. We did say that's potentially where they're going to go. They still want to keep defending the knight. So I think that magic is going to be just around our knight, but he's going to get our rook off the board. Just remember, we have a stealth bishop. So how do we want to play this? I mean, if I'm coming here, his rook's just coming straight away and attacking. If I come here, shall we just bring the knight round here? So I think they will attack the rook now. Again, very arty. It's almost like they sort of like play a cat playing with a, a mouse or something or the other. Let's move the knight to attack his knight, maybe. Trade down. No, he's just going to take with the bishop. Ooh, not too good a position, really. Yeah, his bishop's going to take... Oh, the rook's just going to come across, like we said. Anyway, let's attack the bishop. It's got no protection. That's just going to simply take. So the snowball is starting to build up. But again, they've been very arty. I, I believe they know what they needed to do, but they're just um, kind of showing off now. So we could go here, but then his knight can escape. I believe the magic is in this knight. Here, here. That rook's going. Hmm. Okay, let's just bring the knight here. Let's take the knight off the board. Let's move it a bit quick there. Let's attack the bishop. Hmm. Yes. Interesting. And now they're going for the rook. Okay. Can we dance with the rook? I don't think there's any dance ability with the rook, really, is there? Come here. He just attacks it. Then we've got no more space. I suppose we can go here, but I don't think they'll do that. Let's just do this. Be a bit annoying. He does have a white square bishop. Maybe, oh, he's x-ray, but he can't. The pawn will take. It's attacking the rook. Rook can come here, but the rook will take it. We can come here. Let's just go here. Let's 
they're really making it look really quite difficult. We want to go in for the win. That's what we're trying to go for. We're trying to go for the end game. Thankfully, the opponent is still playing mid-game type stuff, dancing around with the bishop and stuff like that. Not really sure what all that situation is about, really. Could come around and attack the bishop. This rook is now kind of trapped in here. Uh, we could hit the bishop, but it's just getting away. Mm hmm. So they're finding all the spoiling positions. It's just then um, really they could be going for the end game. So it's whether or not. There's none of this. There's none of this. Takes. No secret stealth moves. Apart from coming and attacking the bishop. Well, I think the bishop's just coming here, then it's going to attack the rook. Let's just bring the knight here. It's not going to be all about the knight, isn't it? Just being a bit funky. So it's gone, biting on granite there. It's got no protection in that position. And we're never getting to. If we come here, then we can go for a trade, but maybe I'm not looking for a trade. Yeah, he's wanting the king to come here so he can do this, but this rook is here at the minute. It's all about the knight, dude. It's all about the knight. Let's just bring the knight up. Oh, I'm on 1 minute 51. Cracky. Let's speed up. Let's go for the win. This session's about how to win a chess game. This is the ugliest way ever to ever think of winning a chess game. But it's more realistic. You know, coming back from the back. Oh, he's starting to do something with the rook. Attack the bishop. I forgot a fork. Let's attack the bishop. Are we giving them what they want? No, not yet. Does he come back here attacking the pawn? Maybe so. No. It's attacking the rook, so... It is in the trapped kind of position. It can't really go anywhere. Could take the bishop off the board. Yeah, it's nowhere. And then bishop just attacks it here. Then it's completely trapped. Gonna have to just go here like this. It's a very fancy way of playing this player, doing this stuff. Shall we attack something? Just attack the pawn. It's not end game stuff, but trying to give them something to think about at least. It'd be funny if we did win this game. That's the whole idea behind what we're doing. We're trying to get a win. Got a little bit of a rook rovery thing, but it's got these pawns blocking. With two bishops and two rooks, I don't think we shouldn't really have any play anywhere. Oh, sugar, what's he doing? Oh, he's going for the double attack thing. So he's saying that's, that this is going to be a waste of time because he just hides here. Yeah. Fair dues. Just attack the king again and he just hides down. Then we go here, but it's not checkmate because he just goes there. So, yeah, it's just hiding away. We do have a rook check, almost a mate, but it's not quite because he hides here. So I'll put a check on and then we can go here. That might be checkmate. Um, th that's going to be scary if that is checkmate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. If that is checkmate. Oh my God. You are kidding me. You are absolutely kidding me. The reality is if you're in the game, and you have the psychology to actually want to win. And you've got the skills and you've got the ability. And at the same time, you, you're wanting to participate. And you, you your plan and strategy is to try and win. As we saw in this game here, I don't really know what this player was doing. But they got really fancy with their position, with their moves. Um, they had an out and out win in this particular game. We had no chance whatsoever. I'm not even going to look at the analysis because we saw the damage that was done during the game. 
but the opponent got way too fancy, way too cocky, way too arty. And it's one way to actually win a chess game. Like in any sport, any competitive area, if you take your eye off the ball and you lose focus and you get a little bit too arty and you get too fancy, too cocky, more times out of 10, you're going to end up on your ass and you're going to not win. You're going to lose and lose very badly. Case in point in this game here. Cheers for now.